Hello, I'm presenting on the Mount Rainier Icefall Avalanche that occurred on June 21st, 1981, uh, about 40 years ago, and it is the worst mountaineering accident in American history. Mount Rainier, as most of you know, is located in Washington State. It's located uh, in the Cascade Mountain Range. It's a stratovolcano resulting from subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate beneath the North American Plate. The elevation of the summit is 14,411 feet, making it the tallest mountain in Washington state and one of the tallest in the U.S. Mount Rainier is the most heavily glaciated mountain in the lower 48 states with 26 large glaciers. And as you can imagine, with such intensely variable weather and such dangerous glacial terrain, this much sought after mountaineering destination has had its fair share of accidents and disasters, one of which we will be talking about today. On June 20th, 1981, a group of 23 novice climbers, as well as six professional um, Rainier Mountaineering Inc Incorporation guides, departed Paradise Inn for Camp Mirror. The climbers camped out at Camp Mirror for the night as they would try to summit Mount Rainier the next morning. And so at 3.30 a.m., bright and early, the crew departed Camp Mirror to summit Mount Rainier. And that trip takes usually about five to eight hours, depending on weather. So after crossing Cowlitz Glacier, uh, ascending Cathedral Gla Gap, the team rested on Ingram Flats as um, the guides ascended Disappointment Cleaver, uh, as three, three guides ascended Disappointment Cleaver to assess the avalanche danger. Twenty climbers remained as a guide of three, uh, as a guide took three climbers back to camp. Um, those three climbers just didn't feel like they had the stamina to reach the summit. Um, three guides went up to Disappointment Cleaver, as I just said, uh, and they decided that after after testing the snow that they should not continue the summit due to the um, due to the dangerous snow conditions. Uh, it had snowed the night before. They went up, they tested the snow, uh, and just decided that it was too dangerous to keep keep going. Um, and so they turned around, started to head back to the rest of the team down at Ingram Flats, and uh, that's when they heard just a really loud cracking a ice wall uh, 300 feet wide fell 800 feet from the ingram glacier ice wall and um uh, this this ice fall which is a uh, a area of a glacier characterized by a chaotic and crevassed surface and relatively active flow as you can see pictured here um there's just a 300 foot wide wall of ice that fell down and shattered and dislodged plenty of snow and just sent snow and ice hurling down that glacier towards the um, group of climbers, which I imagine would be located where some of those tents, um, those tents in that picture are, somewhere in that general area. Um, and that, that avalanche captured, um, like all, all the climbers were standing in the way of it. Um, really tragic the the group the group down there they just the reports say that they just stared at the ice falling down not really knowing what to do for a split second because it's just it's just insane seeing all that snow headed towards you and then the guides yelled to run and so everyone started running but it was it was clearly too late um the crew got caught in the slide um 11 uh, were able to dig themselves out, but 11 were swept into what they believe was a crevasse that just collected all that, s a bunch of that snow and ice sliding down the mountain and um, buried them. Um, that's probably what ended up happening. But all these people got caught. Rescue efforts immediately went underway. Um, but they, after after digging and probing for hours, uh, the the search crew had to be called off because of the inclement weather, um, and it just began to snow. Um, and they decided maybe maybe the next day they could come up and find them. And um, there was just no no avail. No no one was found. Um, a couple poles, a hat, a camera, a few things, but no no people. Um, this is just incredibly tragic. So what caused this tragic disaster? Uh, it was a mixture of 
unpredictable ice fall fracturing and new snow. That ice fall fractured and uh, sent ice falling down the mountain, dislodged all that new snow, created an avalanche that um, I guess you could could probably classify as some sort of a, a weird slab avalanche mixed with um, some sort of cornice fall. It's just really rare. Really, these only these only these avalanches really only happen in intensely glaciated areas. Um, so it's just a, a really unpredictable, um, unpredictable scenario. Uh, these ice fall zones are subject to glacial movement, which is completely out of anyone's control. It's kind of like tectonic plates. You can't, you can't really stop a glacier from moving. Um, and when it dislodges, it dislodges. So there's really, really not much that could be done. The victims are listed here. Um, this became a national headline. All sorts of people heard about this. 11 people, including one, uh, including one guide, um, perished in this accident. So mitigation, uh, mitigation in this in this uh, specific issue is uh, or scenario is is kind of a, a difficult topic because in the backcountry it really just comes down to decision making. Um, it's not really possible to mitigate this kind of avalanche danger to a T, especially avalanche danger involving glacial movement, because even when you are in an area where uh, the avalanche danger is low, it still exists and there can still be avalanches or anything such um, or any sort of disaster, even when the probability is low, there's still a chance. Um, the best form of mitigation we have is obviously our minds. We have to calculate risk, assess terrain, make judgments based on knowledge we receive in such a wicked learning environment, which just means a, a learning environment that you, you just have to learn as you go. And it's a very unforgiving um, environment like mountaineering. Um, in, this, in this specific scenario, these, uh, these guides were showing uh, – showing a, a desire to mitigate these these uh these issues that's why they went up and checked the snowfall and they were going to return um they were going to they had canceled the the summit just because of the the dangerous snowpack but um they they done what they could but obviously obviously unable to to stop such a such a bizarre and rare and unpredictable thing as an ice fall avalanche um as a result of this incident, routes and rest points have been reviewed and are constantly subject to change as the mountains change, um, similar to uh, to uh, kind of like roads where there's a landfall, uh, like a landslide likelihood is just you you change the routes, and so that's kind of similar to the kind of mitigation that goes into this sort of a scenario. Uh, avalanche gear is also a form of mitigation. Um, and at this point, like the technology was still pretty new, um, but it has only improved since then. But it still does not uh, not stop these kind of accidents. There's no way to truly uh, avoid risk when you're doing something such as mountaineering. Um, there's no way to ensure safety. There's ways to to better your odds, but there's no way to truly overcome the possibility. So that's all I have. These are some great resources. I recommend checking them out. Um, really incredible, uh, really incredible news articles. Um, I hope this was enjoyable. Um, any questions? Feel free to message me. Um, it's a it's pretty cool, pretty cool, but also really um, a solemn topic for sure. So thanks for tuning in. Hope everything was understandable and clear. I'll see you next time.